this was sort of a conceptual way to do it where you break it up into two parts. And at the end of this, I got a text. And the text said, this seems really complicated. Couldn't you just do this with the, straight from the kinematics equations? Well, one thing I want to say is the point of the text in comments is most really just for questions and clarifications. It is not for editorial commentary. It is unlikely that I'm going to read that and say, you know what, you're right. Let me redo this lecture live in real time and, and do it a different way. That's probably not going to happen. Like, if you don't think every moment of that lecture is scripted, I should be an actor. Right? I'm just harassing you, though. Feel free to text in anything you want. Because actually it did help. Because now I'm going to do it the other way based on your suggestion. Because you can not actually solve this the other way. It's actually a little quicker. I think it's a little less sort of uh, intuitive. But let me just uh, get rid of all this. And real quick, say how else could we solve this? Let's see. We could say this is a free particle going through a trajectory. I don't care if it's even or uneven. It has to follow the kinematics equations. So we could just say, uh, let's write those. Y equals y not 0 plus v uh, y not times time, so 3 times the sine of 60. That's y not t plus 1 half negative 9.8 t squared. That has to be true for the entire trajectory. Not just for the even part. That's true until some other force intervenes and changes the acceleration. We could write x. x also, we said, it starts at the origin. Um, plus 3 cosine of 60 times t plus 0. Because there's no acceleration in the x. Okay. So really, then, we just have to answer the question of what is x when uh, y equals minus 0.4. We have this thing fly along, and when y is minus 0.4, what is x? All we got to do. Well, you say, let's plug in minus 0.4 into this equation. Oh, it's not in here. So they're coupled by time. So what we really have to do is uh, find the time, uh, find the time of y equals minus 0.4, and plug t into x. That's how you would do this, if you want to do it this way. Okay, so to find the time of this equal minus 0.4, you just said equal minus 0.4. Minus 0.4 equals nothing. 3 sine, I went ahead and worked out the numbers here, is, oh, I thought I worked out the numbers. Oh, give me some numbers. Um, 2.6. Yeah, it is uh, 2.6 uh, times t, and it's positive, and it's moving in the positive direction. 2.6 times t minus 1 half 9.8, that's minus 4.9 t squared. So we just have to solve that for t. Oh, but it's a quadratic. And it doesn't have simple roots that you can find just by factoring it easily. You have to use a quadratic equation. That's part of the reason I didn't do it this way in class, is it's just a brute force mathematical thing to do. It doesn't give you the insight. But let's go ahead and do it. So I don't know, I'm going to put this over here and call it 4.9 t squared minus 2.6t minus 0.4 equals 0. There's a, there's b, there's c, and we'll say minus b plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You do all that, and you find uh, two answers. Right? You always get two answers because you have a plus or minus. There's two roots to a quadratic. And it's pretty straightforward, b squared here, Let's see, b is negative here, so it comes out positive here. Squared comes out positive. Minus 4ac, you have a minus sign here, and c is minus. So this term comes out positive. So you get a big term in here. Uh, I won't bother to give you all the numbers. But you get two roots. You get two answers. t is 0.655 seconds. And t is uh, minus 0.124 seconds. Those are both answers. So you might get confused on this of which one to use. And you'd probably guess, well, I guess I'll use the positive one. And you'd be right. You want to use the positive one. But the, ne the negative one does have a meaning. The negative one is saying, if this trajectory started at negative 0.4, this is when it would have happened. Because we defined this as t equals 0. So it would have crossed this line at negative 0.124 seconds if it was starting back here at a little bit faster and a little bit higher angle. But we don't care about that. We care about this time. 
So we found the time here, not just the symmetric part, we found the time there at 0.655 seconds. So all we got to do is plug that into this. And that's it. So now we say x equals cosine of 60 is a half, so that's 3, that's 1.5. 0.5 times 0.655 right, meters per second times seconds, and you get 0.9825 meters, which is the answer, just like 0.983 before. We just calculated it in two straightforward steps. So yes, you can do it that way.